All right, suffice it to understand that I'm talking about these balls here are the tendon anthesis, and they also ligaments and tendons. They lock them into a muscle or another mat that keeps them anchored, and then the muscles pull against those tendons. These are the anchor balls, and they come in all different types of chemistry, depending upon where, where they are in the body and what they have to anchor against what the chemistry is in that particular area and they come in all kinds of a ton of different styles and I can see them all and I have them all okay I know the claims I'm making are just I'm so over the top but this interstitium is the same stuff that you're gonna see on Mars it's called the Mars Morse code and I don't know if I've showed it to you yet but let me show you something that else is on our earth right here is the same stuff that's the same mucosa this is the same um, interstitium which is in, in these balls are in these walls and then they erode away and down here becomes mud this they, they become mud and these are those stone balls now they had straps on them originally they were in these walls and they were part of this creature's body which is our earth I'm, I'm sorry just the way life is and the only one that ever said anything about the earth being a body and a corpse was Jesus Christ as I could determine uh, although they did talk about all of these things in the ancient text we always thought were just myths and just nonsense I'm telling you it is not now this is when they first reported back they may have found fossils on Mars and they did and then they just stopped talking about it I don't know why you see these they call these the Moki marbles these are those tiny little balls and there's a bazillion of them and they are what's called interstitium balls and they anchor between the, the mucosa which could be skin or in, in uh, the intestines it's like the mucous membrane and then they anchor all the different little straps between that and the basement layer and once the all that stuff erodes it turns into mud and the rest are these stone balls and there normally would have been straps through them and they are in in um, in my belt fibers I've shown it a million times you take a belt right where the loop goes through in, in a cowhide belt all you'll see all these little black balls and the straps will be running from them because it's being ripped apart tanned leather they just flatten them out and so that the leather can be all mushy and turn around and do all this stuff and it's still held together it's because of the straps all right remember now this is the Mars Morse code they don't know what to think about it I just told you what I believe it is is interstitium which is nothing more than skin basically pulled together here and stretched here can I prove that well I think I maybe I can with cowhide all right here's my cowhide leather belt now we don't have balls on this one to speak of like the other one does all right what happens here on tanning is they use some chemistry normally and then they roll this flat and they squish it and burn it and make it into get all the fluids out of it and the fibers and then they turn them into a very fibrous mat which is which is a belt all right, it swishes all around. Now, let me put this back under here. This is the back of the belt. All right, here's the front of the belt. I don't know if there's any big difference that you'll see, but this is the texture of the belt on the outside. And it's been all flattened and rolled. So now, let's go to the inside. Don't forget, I say this is nothing more than the Morse code on Mars. Exactly the same. Now, where are the stretch marks? Well, here they are, right here. You see that? That's where there's a belt loop. You see the ball, the, the straps? Those are the straps. Whoops, let me back this out a little bit here. Those are the straps you're seeing right there. The straps go to the balls. All right, these are the straps. They lead over to the balls. You see? Over here, they're not stretched and pulled away. Right at the loop, they pull out. So as far as I'm concerned, Mars' surface is exactly like that because it is exactly like that. These are from the, from the Curiosity mission to Mars. These are the Mars blueberries. Exactly the same as I showed you the Moki marbles. Now, 
This is the Mars crab. This is muscle. These are sarcomeres. Get up, it's, get somebody that knows anatomy. That's what you need to do is get somebody who's more than just a biologist or an anatom uh, geologist. You can need them all. You need an anatomist, a biologist, chemist, geologist, everybody. That is an artery. That is a vein. The artery has all these little blood vessels that service these sarcomeres, which are muscle tissue. Here it is right here. This is on Mars. It's called the Mars crab. All that dust that's down here is eroded, f f muddy, bloody um, tissue that comes in, out from, it was the muscle tissue. Muscle turns into mud. All right, the balls turn into to those stone balls and the connective tissue turns into those little flat plates we just saw. There's something else here, Mars, Mars code, yeah, look at this, check this out. And this is big, I don't know exactly the size of it, but this is called the Mars Morris code. This is pinched up skin, this is pinched up skin, this is stretched, stretched a little bit, this is where it's gathered, this is where it's stretched. These are the straps, these are the balls. Remember I said the balls are the tough ones? That's, these are the tough things. This is, whoops, this must be like on a hill or something. And it's pinched in between. You can see how close the little, little balls are and the, they're, they're pinched. Now, if this was completely relaxed, it would just be all, you know, almost about like this probably. It's just pinched here, pinched here, stretched here, and stretched here. Now, I'm going to show you my, my belt. I figured I'd better show it to you since I've been telling you that the belt will have these same things in it. And this would be right next to a belt buckle. <laughs> All right, as far as I can detail, tell, every single thing there is, is a body part of a creature or was from a body part of an exploded creature and is now <laughs> in space. I don't know what to make of it other than these things were talked about in the ancient texts. That is one of the tendon balls. That's the abrupt transition. This is, I think, Mimas or whatever. Even our own moon has the same type of a crater. If it was looked at with extreme scrutiny, we could understand exactly all of these. And even like um, Iopetus. Well, let me show you that. Hold on. You see that? That's Iopetus. It's got an equatorial ridge. And like I said, a lot of them have different features. Here's the ridge up close. And all of these little pock marks, those aren't necessarily craters. I'm not saying some of them are, but most of them are the natural indentations made to lock these anchors in. And then there's Mimas, and they all have these. Some of them have very, very good detail. But the, I found Comet 67P, 100%. I'm going to do a very long video, and it's going to be long, it's going to be detailed, and it's going to be deep, and I think I have found some meaning. Um, it may not be what the meaning for you is, but I'm going to tell you what I think, because I think I, I, think I have some things to say that should be said, and I am going to say them. All right, I love you all. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Okay, this just came out the other day, February 22nd, 22, and this is Paul Davies, and he is talking about, are we alone in the universe? Well, you've just seen what I showed you, so you have to make your own determination about that. However, I started into this video, and it's going to be very, very long, and I'm, uh, because there is meaning to this, and I, this is what I've, I've tried to understand. I'm mean, I just chasing around just to have fun, or is there a meaning to this? And I think there's, a, I found... At least meaning for me. Now, here's what he has to say. And this is meaningful to a lot of people, obviously. Here's what he has to say. Okay, my friends, one of my favorite channels, the Royal Institution London. These are the top people in, in um, everything in science, basically. That's what they claim. Now, I dispute most of the things they say because I am an alternative researcher, but I come with proof. I'm going to show you what he says is just wrong. Listen. Davies and I'm director of something called the Beyond Center for Fundamental Concepts in Science at Arizona State University. And we tackle the big questions of existence, things like what happened before the Big Bang and how did life begin and is uh, time travel possible? And one of the biggest questions that we can ask is, are we alone in the universe? During my career, the opinion on that has swung back and forth. 
So when I was a student uh, here in London, the prevailing view was that life is so stupendously complex and so very special that it could only have arisen once in the universe. It must have been a dream run of chemical reactions that turned non-life into life. Uh, this is uh, so improbable that even given the vastness of the universe out there, the chances of it happening again somewhere else were infinitesimal. But now, uh, today, it's fashionable to say that the universe is teeming with life. And the curious thing is that we have no evidence one way or the other. And so this All right, this is the problem. They, they are just making up theories. I'm showing you evidence, and they refuse to engage. Now, I'm going to leave it at this for now, but, but I am going to go very, very deep into this, because you have to read Ovid in Metamorphosis, and all of the Hesiod and, you know, a lot of, all of the earliest texts, they're not meaningless. <laughs> they were no jokes. And um, Velikovsky did a tremendous amount of work, absolutely enormous amount of work on, on th our early history and was destroyed for it. Because we, there was a time when our solar system was out of whack and the planets were not revolving nice around in circles and they were interacting with each other and that's how Mars was killed, Earth was really wrenched and all of these giant floods are recorded all over the earth. Now you could take them religiously, you could take them any way you want. I have made up my own decisions, you make up your own, but I'm going to display the evidence to support why I feel the way I feel. You watch, you know watch, it's up to you.